All right, now I want to dive a little bit deeper into the oscillator section over here. Now, we know that we have different oscillators that we can choose from, uh, but all the oscillators pretty much have the same parameters with a few exceptions, all right? So if we look at pulse, we know that down here we have things that can adjust the frequency ratio, the frequency in semitones, and we can also detune the frequency. If we look over here, we have a phase modulation knob, which allows us to do some interesting sound shaping by basically twisting and distorting the phase of the waveform. When we're talking about the phase of a waveform, we're basically talking about the position of it in time. If I look at this waveform here, we can describe it uh, as having 360 degrees of phase, this entire wave cycle. Starting at the beginning, this would be zero degrees. Uh, when we get to the exact midpoint, that would be 180 degrees. And once we get to the end, that's 360 degrees or back to zero. So when we're talking about phase and here, phase modulation, uh, this is allowing us to modulate the phase, modulate the position of the waveform. Now, something like this, we can hear it. It may not really be that easy to understand what's actually happening. Uh, one way that we can visualize this is by adding something like an oscilloscope. And I'm going to change a couple settings to make it a bit easier to see the notes when they get played. All right. Now, one thing with this sound is that I have the filter on right now, so we're not really hearing the full impact of the oscillator on its own. So let me just disable the filter. Okay, so we can see what this pulse waveform looks like right now. Sub oscillator's down, the noise generator's down. All I'm hearing is this. I'm gonna start to do this phase modulation and let's just look at what happens to the waveform as we're playing with this. Okay, so the result is very, very different from what we got before. Okay, we can see the shape of the waveform here has been uh, slightly distorted, and that's giving us a much more aggressive kind of buzzy tone. So phase modulation can be a very, very useful tool, and this is available to you uh, with all the oscillators that are available. All right, so this is one option we have here. And in addition to that, utilizing the pulse width. and then the oscillator sync. Now oscillator sync has always been something that was like a little bit hard for me to really fully describe clearly, but I think that Bitwig makes a great job of making it easier to understand. If we go into the help view, again, I click on the Polymer device, we have show help here. And if we look, we have descriptions of all the different parameters. If I go down here to the oscillator area and it's talking about the sync knob, it says semitone offset of the root waveform's pitch for a shift in timbre. Now that may not sound very clear, but when we talk about the waveform being generated, all right, when I play a note, this waveform is repeated a certain number of times per second based on the frequency of the note that I'm playing, right? Based on the pitch that I should hear. And let's just bring this down. So what I can do with the sync is I can make it so that even though I'm playing this note, I can make it so that the waveform uh, is essentially repeating more times per wave cycle, uh, which is gonna change the timbre of the sound. And you can adjust this in semitones. So you'll see if I go to plus 12, which is an octave higher, it's gonna sound like the note I'm playing is an octave higher. But as I'm going in between the octaves, it doesn't sound like the pitch is changing, it just sounds like the timbre is changing. This is another great tool to take a very simple waveform and make it sound dramatically different. As we look down here, uh, as I mentioned before, the things in orange here typically are related to frequency or pitch. Uh, the reason why we can play different pitches is because this is enabled, which is key tracking. Now when key tracking is disabled, every single note generates a sound at the same frequency, uh, and you can determine that over here. Now let's turn key tracking back on because I actually need that <laughs> for my purposes. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is a frequency ratio. Uh, so this is good if you want to drop the frequency down an octave or tune up and down the harmonic series. We have our pitch offsets. So if you want to adjust the pitch in semitones, we can do that here. 
This is good if you're layering multiple oscillators. Let's say if we use an instrument layer, we have two polymers. We want to create a harmony. We could like tune one up seven semitones and create a nice root fifth harmony. And then to the right of that, we have the ability to detune based on hertz. And we can also enable this to do some stereo detuning. Now, like I said, these parameters are available in all the other oscillator options. So if we don't want to start with a pulse oscillator, let's say we start with something that's a bit more smooth, like a sine wave. Right, very calm, very smooth. Uh, but by just doing, you know, some slight adjustments to some things that we're aware of. Now again, we don't have a pulse width here, we have a skew parameter. But essentially gives us a similar result. Very cool. All right, so that's just with the oscillator, not even doing too much, but already we took a sine wave and created something that's uh, quite unique. Now, what I really wanna do is start to dive into the wavetable oscillator, because there's a lot of fun stuff to show there. So let's do that next.